You're now tuned in to another episode of Words of Woods. I'm your host, T. Woods, checking in. Before you watch this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend. On today's episode of Words of Woods, man, we got a special guest in the building, man. He came through today, man. He got a brand called Worth the Risk, man, and I appreciate this guy for coming through, man. Chop it up with me here today on Words of Woods. Introduce yourself to the people. I'm Nate. I own uh, the brand Worth the Risk, and I'm from Toledo, Ohio. How you doing, man? Special, like I said, man. Special shout out to you for coming through, chopping yeah, up man. me today, I man. You, you ain't have to come here, man. You could have been doing anything with your time, but you came here to talk to me, and I definitely appreciate that, man. But how you doing, man? How how's your day going so far? How's your Saturday going so far? Good. Woke up. Just been driving all day. Woke up, put some clothes on, brushed my teeth, hopped in the car. All right, man. Now I'm here. That's put it. some swag on. Appreciate Plus you. Swag on. I definitely fuck with the fit, man. I Thank definitely you, man. fuck with the hat for sure, man. And let's talk about the brand, man. You're here for a reason. Let's talk about the brand. Worth the risk. As I see on your hat, definitely a fire hat, man. Appreciate it. It ain't on sale no more, is it? It is. It, it is. is on sale. Oh, it is. It make is. sure y'all go cop the hat, bro. Yeah. But let's talk about the brand. Uh, Basically, worth the risk to me is just like there was a moment in time where I was kind of just, I graduated high school, I was in college. I was kind of just, you know, just going through the motions. And then uh, I was at, you know what Gabe's is? Y'all have Gabe's? Yeah. I went to a Gabe's one day, and I saw just like this, like, this white pair of jeans, right? And I was like, you know, like I've seen people dye jeans and do stuff to jeans. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what, let me try this. So I went to, uh, what is it, Michael's. Yep. Got some, you know, dye and stuff, and I just dyed the jeans. Uh, they actually, they were cool. Like, they weren't that sweet, but they were all right. But, uh, like, I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't know, like, all the steps to take. I ended up washing them. The color kind of came out, so they were, like, a faded look. But they still look good. But I posted them, and I just said, you know, like, the caption was, you know, jeans by me. And I kind of had a few people, like, you know, comment on it, like, oh, that's cool, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, you know what? Like, it was fun, too. I was like, let, let me let me try this, you know? So I, I went and bought, like, probably 10 pairs of 501 Levi's white, all-white jeans, I went to Mar Michael's, bought a bunch of dye, just started dyeing jeans just all over the place, mm -hmm. just mixing colors that I didn't know what would look like, like, mixed together, because I'm no, like, art major. I don't yeah, know, like, green and You just whatever. experiment. Right. So then some of them turned out cool. Some of them turned out Trash. atrocious. Yeah. It's good to admit yeah. that, though, like, everything ain't going to be a hit, though. Like, no. you know, people got to realize that, like, everything you do isn't going to be success. Like, yeah. it's going to, you got to fail before you succeed right. in and life, period. That, I mean, the the failure in, in doing the clothes stuff has helped, you know, mm -hmm. exponentially. Like, doing stuff with manufacturers or, you know, the time zone difference and everything like that and man, not talk, the talk, language barrier. Talk about that, man. So, me being a consumer, you know, I buy the clothes from people, but... The people who actually make the clothes, the people who actually have to go through and talk to the manufacturers mm -hmm. and stuff like that. What is the process like doing all that? And, you know, you got to because, like I said, you got to deal with different time zones right. and all that stuff. So right. how is that process, you know, dealing with those people to make sure that you get your product how you want it? Right. You know, because it could be a lot of low shit to you that's just shit. shit. And just like, yeah. you got to deal with it and, you know, figure it out because you got people who probably bought your, you know, item and mm -hmm. things don't come out the right way. So. Mm -hmm. How is that, you know, dealing with the manufacturers and stuff? So, at first, I really, like, didn't know what I was doing. I mm -hmm. was kind of just, you know, like, winging it. And uh, so I had, at first, I wasn't ordering samples of things. So I would just, you know, find something I like. They would send me pictures of the product. Like, I would do the measurements. Like, everything I do is all cut and sew. So all the sleeve, everything is, is cut and sew. So I would have all the measurements to exactly what I want. But you ever get like a like a, a piece of clothes and you feel it and it's like it's not it. Like, damn, this, this is isn't not, the material I thought it was. Yeah. You know what I mean? All the time, bro. And that's all the time. The material makes the clothing, the clothing like because yep. you man, you can have something that looks good, but if the material is shitty, it's just right. shitty. Period. You know who's a good example is like Fear of God mm -hmm. or like you ever seen like Gallery Department? Yeah. Like they make like really nice, high quality clothes mm -hmm. with just like very minimal, you know, graphics design stuff like that, but. You know, they can sell a, Jerry can sell a plain white or plain black t-shirt for $110 mm -hmm. and it's going to boom. Yep. You know what I mean? Because the material is nice. But the thing, the, the biggest thing with, with dealing with the manufacturers is that language barrier, mm -hmm. honestly, because like my girl would tell me all the time that I'm being rude. She'd be like, you know, say it nicer. But Man, it's like, how, how do you, you say it though? You like, have to say it but in you have the to, simplest terms you possible. Have, you have to say it and get your point across right. because somebody can just like 
walk all over you mm-hmm. or they could just you know and you gotta be up front and bold like, yeah. like like we said before we um you know got on air my name is behind this my right. name is behind the brand so right. i need it done a certain way right and i don't have time to sugarcoat and beat around the no. bush with you i need to get bold yeah. and tell you what it is that i need and what i don't need so hey, can i cuss on you yeah right okay Do whatever you want they don't give a fuck about you <laughs> like at all they, those manufacturers they don't care they just want to Get your dollar, mm-hmm. ship you the shit as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. They don't like they don't like redoing things. You know, I've gotten lucky a few times where like I had a hoodie that I wanted the words, you know, outlined and they filled them in like in full. And she sent me a picture of it and I was like, No, I need it this way mm-hmm. and she didn't end up charging me, she redid it and like that's cool. And you'll have your people like that, which is like and then that's you mark that down, it's like, Okay, I can work with them in the future. But then you'll have your people who literally not make any changes. They won't listen to you. They'll just ship you the shit. They'll ship you the shit, and it's it's packaged like all tight. The mm-hmm. design is, you know, yeah. the the graphics messed up. So there's, you know, there's a million things, but that's just, you know, part of. So the how business. do you find the right manufacturer? Like, what's the process like of finding that so person? So for me, I'll put in like a RFQ, a request for quotation, and then you'll have like, you know, maybe five this time, fifty this time, like sending you why you sh- it's it's literally like an audition honestly mm-hmm. they'll send you why you should you know use this manufacturer what they can provide they'll send you picked like examples of, of what they have you can look through like their catalogs and stuff like that but to be honest like most of the time that these manufacturers are so they're so big and they just want to get their uh clothing to people everywhere that like the clothes are very simple you know what i mean mm-hmm. and if you don't want to do something simple the steps you have to go through to achieve that are like mm-hmm. extensive. You it's know a I mean? lot of hassle, like, yeah. and it's a risk. Like the yeah. brand worth the risk, yeah. man. So, what what made you come up with the name worth the risk? What is the significance <clears throat> behind the name worth the risk? So I was I was uh, during that time period that I was you know doing the jeans and stuff. I didn't have a name yet, and uh, I was kind of like. I watch a lot of interviews. I watch a lot of YouTube. Watch a lot of you man, know people same, talk. Bro. YouTube, the new TV. Man, it, it really is. Like, you don't need cable. You can just no, watch YouTube. YouTube wrong. TV, literally. <laughs> But I was watching a, I was watching a bunch of interviews and stuff, and I, I kept hearing, like, successful people talk about risk, you know, and risking things and, you know, doing it for, you know, you got to risk it for whatever it may be. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So then I wanted to use the name risk, but I didn't really, like, I couldn't put together the words how I wanted it. So my girlfriend, Naya, she, we were kind of just, you know, like, spitballing one day, and she said, like, what about worth the risk? And I kind of just was like sat there for a second and then I kind of just like really thought about it it's and it hit me you. and I was like yeah I really like that you know and I, I still never like showed anybody immediately like that name or mm-hmm. never like posted it or anything like that I kind of sat on it for probably like a few weeks and then I was like you know like I, I want to do this and it's got a good abbreviation WTR so I can use WTR on things which I do all the time mm-hmm. so that was that was really motivation behind that oh, that's fire man so since the brand's name is worth the risk, how important is risk taking to you? And like, what is the like, when, when you're taking a risk, man, it's like that's so important in life because you gotta right. take risk in life. Like, right. if you don't take no risk, you ain't gonna succeed. So, right. how important is taking risk to you? And you know, just some things that risk taking comes with. Yeah, it's everything, honestly. I mean, in your business, my business, any business, if if you don't take risks and fail like we were talking about earlier Mm -hmm. you can never you can never really achieve what you want to i mean you got you're gonna fail your stuff's not gonna go the way you want to but you at least gotta have the like power to say you know what i'm gonna try this Mm -hmm. and to be honest at first like i've loved clothes my whole life you know and i've always liked doing stuff with clothes and and things like that but i never envisioned myself as being like a a clothing brand owner you know and then like i kind of was just feeling like that in this certain part of my life and I was like, I, you got to take the risk. You know yeah. what I mean? I got to do it. I like not try and not do be it. scared to do something that you no. love doing. Like I think that's a lot of people's problem. Like a lot of yeah. people may have something in their mind that they want to do. Right. You know, they really want to do this. They got this crazy idea in their brain, but they're scared. Like mm-hmm. they don't really have the courage to do whatever it is that they're doing. And right. I commend you and I commend anybody doing something like, right. you know, Definitely. putting out content or putting out, you know, something to the public because – you're taking time to put yourself out there when a lot of people yeah. won't even do that. Like a lot of people have criticism and hate. A lot of people have opinions on things, yeah. but they won't never do what you do. They won't never have the That's courage normal. to 
you right. know. That comes with it, you know. Yeah. I mean, hate and all that stuff is just. How do you deal honest, with the hate, man? Do, anymore, like, when I was younger, I used to, you know, it probably would get to me. You know, mm-hmm. I would get upset or, like, why is this happening? Get real defensive and right. like, same, you bro. You know, like, fuck you, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. now it's just, like, it's normal to me because I've, I've dealt with it a lot, like, my whole life. So it's, like hey no hey it doesn't matter at this point it's if you hate me that's okay you know i'm just gonna keep it pushing my way i'm not mm-hmm. gonna say anything to you anymore and my younger self i would have been defensive and i would have you know maybe said something to you or you know made a confrontation of it but now it's like i'm a grown man you're gonna hate what you hate i mean it's most of the time people are hating it's just people who really don't be doing shit Man, you know fact, what I mean? and most of the time people are hating. They really fans of you. Like, right. They really wish that they can do what you do, right. but they 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 scared. They right. don't have the risk taking mentality to do whatever it is that you're doing. Yeah. But man, the famous saying, man, you ain't got no haters. If you ain't you, if you ain't popping, <laughs> wait. If you ain't got no haters, you ain't popping. Yep. And that's facts yep. though, because really you you doing something right. Like any anybody who is great, think about anybody who is great in life. They had haters. Oh like, man, I mean, like my my favorite example is LeBron. Bro, I was just about to say LeBron. <laughs> it's just like, and his number one hater is Skip Bayless. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. It, it, I feel like, man, when you so great, oh they God. gotta try anything, bro. So I think Skip, this is random, but I think he's on payroll to hate LeBron. Easily, like, he, like I think a lot of these guys, like are, he, honestly, everybody has to be. A, it, it can't it can't be a bunch of superheroes. Somebody oh. has to be a villain. Yeah. So it's like, all right, somebody has to play like the bad role. And I used yeah. to watch wrestling growing up. Okay. So like WWE, some, yeah, WWE. Mm-hmm. So somebody has to be the bad guy. It can't just right. be a bunch of John Cena's because <laughs> it's not gonna be fun. Somebody has yeah. to be the evil villain that uh-huh. nobody likes. You know, the person right. that you hate to love. But see, I'm not a WWE guy, but a lot yeah. of my boys that yeah. grew up watching WWE, so I hear about that show all the time. Yeah, but it's just like, man, you you gotta have. Well, you don't have to have, but you're going to have haters in life right. if you're doing something. If you're Achieving success in some type of way, mm-hmm. if you're doing something with yourself, you're going to have haters, and that's yeah. just the bottom line. But And I'm sure even in your business, it's like that, yeah. too, because you're, I mean, like with clothes and stuff like that, I can make the clothes, and, mm-hmm. like, I have a personal Instagram, but, like, my face, I don't even think my face is on my brand Instagram, like, mm-hmm. one time, honestly. Mm-hmm. So there's really no face behind it. But with you, I mean, yeah, you're I, sitting in front of a camera talking. Man, you know. I, so I have put out a video, man, and it was directed towards the ladies. They didn't like what I was saying, man. Mm-hmm. I was just getting, like, crucified. Like, mm-hmm. I'm talking about I was getting all types and names called at me. Uh-huh. And it's like, I wouldn't say that's people hating on me, but it's it's not always going to be positive. Like, no, I was man. so used to getting all this, oh, bro, I love your content, mm-hmm. keep doing your thing. Oh, man, you speaking facts. Right. So I had to get a dose of that negativity yeah. and just backlash and just, okay, we don't like what you're saying, you know. And mm-hmm. that was like a reality check for me. Like, damn, you know, it's not always going to be peaches and cream. No. Not everybody's going to yeah. agree with what you have to say. But you have to just take that, take it to the chin and just be like, all right, Develop tough skin because I like you were saying like a part of me wanted to get defensive and like mm-hmm. I ain't gonna lie I felt some type of way like yeah, I was like damn I'm always getting this positive feedback. You're human. I mean you, yeah I'm human and this is this is my stuff so it's like mm-hmm. you're definitely cautious and sensitive when it comes to to, to your product and right. I, you can probably say the same thing when definitely. you put something out if people say if a bunch of people say you don't like it you're gonna mm-hmm. feel some type of way right. naturally like it's yeah. just as a human being you're yeah. gonna feel that but, feel that way. I mean, don't get me wrong, like, constructing, constructive criticism I can deal with. Like, mm-hmm. I have friends who will give me constructive criticism, and they're not saying it, like, in a hateful manner. They're just saying, like, I think you could do this or that or whatever it may be, and that's all fine. It's just when people start to get personal and yep. stuff like that, or they bring in, you know, somebody's family, somebody's yep. relationship, shit like that. Exactly. It's like, all right, come on, bro. Yeah. It's just past the point now. Exactly. But, yeah, to get what I was saying, it's like, you, you just got to take the good with the bad. Mm-hmm. It's not always going to be, like, Everything ain't gonna be fine and dandy. It's not mm-hmm. gonna always be good. Like it's gonna be bad. Right. Like, and like I said, I just my damn hard drive just crashed. Yeah. Like I'm just like everything's going good. Then it gotta go bad. But mm-hmm. you gotta get uncomfortable sometimes, yeah, you know, in order to to just flourish. But yeah. you know, developing your brand, you know, just putting out your stuff. Has there ever been any downs? Like you know, moments where you just like, man, I don't know, man, I don't yeah. really want to like. Oh yeah. I ain't feeling this no more. Like you know, I love clothes, but man, this ain't it. Something, yeah. it, it shit ain't right. Definitely. I mean, there was like, I'm not gonna say which thing it was, but there was one point where like, I put something out, and I kind of rushed it, and I kind of forced it, and I just wanted to get it out. But it, was, it wasn't the right time. I wasn't really, like, in love with the piece. Mm-hmm. It was just something I wanted to do. And, like, the feedback wasn't great. 
the the sales weren't great and I was just thinking to myself like you know just because like I said we're human and you know you lay in bed at night you think about the shit that goes on in your day and I was just laying there like damn bro like I hope this isn't what's to come, but you know, in the future. Yeah, you start and, thinking like, man, is it always gonna be like this? But right. it's just you can't think like that. Right. You expect the worst. Yeah. Because I mean, then your expectations can't be. You exactly. Know, nah. My expectations for myself are like it's high as shit. Way too high. <laughs> and like my girl get on me, my mom will get on me. Like you mm-hmm. know, you gotta. You're too hard on yourself. Right. Right. Just and relax, like bro. Just. I'm the same way, bro. Like I be too hard on myself, and mm-hmm. people tell me, like, bro, you're fine, you're cool, bro. Right. You you know that level you want to get to, mm-hmm. and I feel like if you're not hard on yourself, if you don't push yourself like that, and if we don't have that mentality that we have, mm-hmm. we not gonna get to where we want to be because we're gonna get too comfortable. Right, and, and that's what I don't want. Get I don't want comfortability in like you know stagnant mm-hmm. times At because all. I mean it's it, when you're stagnant, it just feels like you're not growing. You know what I mean? And to grow, you have to risk things, you know, be uncomfortable, you know. But, like, yeah, so what? So explain some of the ups and downs that you've been through, you know. put You said you rushed a product, mm-hmm. which obviously that's something you can't do. Right, um, right. Do you ever get caught up in, like, just when it comes to clothes, like, you know, a lot of stuff trends mm-hmm. and then a lot of stuff, you know, do you ever get caught up in, like, the trendy type of just, like, okay, you I got to put this out because <clears throat> this is what's popping? Yeah. You know, it's... it's it's very hard not to. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel personally myself, I haven't really gotten caught up in trends. Um, but, like, I got a perfect example. You ever see the jeans that flare at the bottom mm-hmm. and they got, like, a little triangle going up them? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, at the bottom. And yeah. they flare at the bottom of your shoes. Yeah. And, like, I really like how those jeans look. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I will wear those jeans. But that's not something that I want to put out as like for my brand yeah. and it's trendy. And I think if I did do it, mm-hmm. people will buy it, mm-hmm. but it's really honestly just like not my swag. Mm-hmm. And though my whole, my whole reason behind doing this, at least at first, and it is still now is just making clothes that I want to wear that me and my boys want to wear. Mm-hmm. Like that was the whole startup of it, honestly, or part of it, mm-hmm. you know, like I like, I wanted to just do some shit myself that I can say I made and that I want to wear. You know what I mean? But that's how I got to be. Like, if <clears throat> I, I wouldn't trust any person who designs clothes that would not wear their own shit. Right. Like, I'm not. Tr- right. If I don't never see you wearing your own <laughs> shit, I am. Why would I wear it? Because yeah. you don't believe in your brand. Mm-hmm. So why should I? But a lot of people get caught up with the, the trends and stuff mm-hmm. like that and put out stuff that's popping right now. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, okay, a year later, it's not even cool no more. You right. Know, boom. Right. But I try not to, like. Man, it's so crazy when it comes to fashion, bro. Everything is like a, re- it's a boomerang effect, bro. Like, so baggy in. shit is in now, bro. I wear a lot of baggy shit, bro. And it's like I like, I ain't gonna lie, I like some baggy shit now. Like, mm-hmm. and two years ago, oh hell no, I'm not wearing nothing no, baggy. You wearing baggy fits? You, you you're out, you're it's out. A, it's a bad fit. So yeah. it's just like, bro. I feel like nowadays, bro, you kind of just got to do your own thing, mm-hmm. and people gonna catch on to the wave sooner yeah. or later. But it's like. But now with fashion, it's like, okay, who who's doing who who can bring something back first? Right. So now I'm seeing motherfuckers wearing G Shocks again. Uh-huh. So it's like, all right. So like Kid Cudi yeah, so it's like, G-Shock. okay, I'm I'm I, I, let me go back in history. What was cool? So all right, I'm about to bring that back mm-hmm. and I'm gonna be the first person with that back. So now, okay, I'm transetting, but motherfuckers been doing yeah, that. No, it's but not. it's just you 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 going through the archives and right. just what what was popping. Right. Well and I think that also has to has to do with vintage and vintage is huge right now. Like yeah. I wear a lot of vintage too. Yeah. Like um my friend is a is a vintage reseller, uh Midwest closet, shout out Zach. But uh like vintage is so big and Part of vintage was baggy clothes, baggy yeah. jeans, baggy t-shirts, shit like that. Like just recently, I bought a, I'm like a 32 waist. Mm-hmm. I bought a pair of 30 size 36 Ed Hardy denim shorts, oh, man. and they're like they're down to like <laughs> they're down to like my ankles. I didn't want them to be that low, but or actually my girl bought them for me. But I didn't want them to be that, that low, but I uh, like how they look. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it, it just all circles yeah, back, bro. man. They got the Vizus, man. Uh-huh. They got the Ed, they got the it's a, it's a, it's a, at Hardy, EV Sue, so what's that. something that you like? Okay, you know, I would say you go back in time with the fashion. What's something that you absolutely refuse to like? I don't give a fuck if this shit is in style or not. I'm not wearing it. I'll never wear khakis. Okay, I can't wear khakis. Khakis is not it for you. I can't wear khakis. <laughs> no, yeah, khakis is a no go. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else a no go that's like big in fashion. 
I wanted to ask you this too. You know, I had this written down. So, what makes a good fit and what makes a bad fit? Let's start off with the bad since we're already talking about the no no nos. What okay. what what makes a bad fit? And everybody has their own style. Right. You know, I'm not the fashion police. So if somebody right. wants to wear something, <laughs> I'm not gonna I might be like, eh, that's I wouldn't wear that, mm-hmm. but I'm not gonna just start talking about them or whatnot. But right. What makes a bad fit and what makes a good fit? You to start me, off with the bad first. To me, I like individuality. Mm-hmm. Individuality. So, like, if, if your fit looks like, you know, you really put that together mm-hmm. and it looks, you know, it flows, it looks cool, then I'm all for it. Like, even if it's, you know, not, like, name brand. Like, I'm not a, I don't really wear name yeah, brand. You're not you know a, what I'm saying? I never wear name brand, actually. You're not a designer junkie? No. Like, I got, I got like, one designer thing, maybe two. Like, I got some sunglasses. That's it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But a bad fit, I would say, is, like, I don't want this to sound bad, but, like, the like avid mall shoppers mm-hmm. to me, you know what I'm saying? Like H and M jeans, mm-hmm. you know, a pack sun t shirt. Mm-hmm. And not not to say there's anything wrong with that yeah. because, you know, that might just be your swag and you really don't care enough to like put together a fit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's fine. But to me that just looks like and if you try and like flex it too, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like or you have like some the big thing is kids will have crazy ass shoes. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? Expensive ass shoes. But the fit is ten dollar jeans yeah. and a two dollar t shirt. Yeah, I don't like, understand that. It's not about the prices, it's but it's about, just about how it looks. Don't dress like a mannequin. No, yeah. Like, you don't yeah. want to dress like put your own style and flavor into it, bro. Right. I see what you're saying though. Like, I, it's just I can't explain it, but I know you, know you what just I'm broke it's it hard down. To explain. You just broke it down to a T. It just like that whole just like get up, but it's, it's almost just, just like a vibe you get from yeah, it too. Nah, you know facts, what I mean? facts, facts. And it's just I don't know because somebody can get an H and M shirt, somebody can get an H and M shirt, or somebody can get like a pair of pants. Mm-hmm. But like, all right, say if you did get a, sh- a pair of pants from H and M. Style it with a different like shirt and right. then style it with a different type of right. shoe, just like and right. then put it like a jet. Like it's just certain yeah, no, way that you like, can. Even me, I got cheap. I wear cheap shit too. Like yeah. I said, I wear vintage. Like I like these jeans right here are like they're just some some straight leg black jeans I bought for like fourteen dollars. You know what I mean? So it's not the price has nothing to do with it. It's mm-hmm. just you know how it looks. And I learned this too, bro. Not everybody. So I I was blessed with the style. You know, just the mm-hmm. sense of style. Right. But not everybody, like, when it comes to style, not everybody has that it factor of yeah. putting things together. Like, yeah. it, it's, it, and it that's ama- cool. And that's cool. That's like, cool, but it amazes me that some people, like, like when it comes to, like, dressing mm-hmm. and putting clothes together, they don't have, like, they'll wear, like, a hot pink shirt <laughs> with, like, some fire red shoes uh-huh. <laughs> with, like, a b- pair of blue jeans and they like yeah. think that that's cool like i said a, a ig caption like big drip or something yeah like, like that. that's cool like i said we're not judging but it's just like crazy how some people don't like it don't click in their mind like okay no. this doesn't really like yeah. go together like this doesn't right. just what gets me too is like the people who do dress like that mm-hmm. and then hate or still talk shit you yeah. know what i'm saying like they will dress like this, and they'll post the caption saying, "I got all this drip on, yada yada yada." Mm-hmm. I hate that word drip too, but all that, and then they'll come to my page or some shit like that, and like you know, start running their mouth. Yeah, because you can like it, it, a lot of people hate that you can pull something off that they can't like. Right. And right. I'm 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 the type of person, man. I have a bunch of different looks and style. Mm-hmm. Like I can look like one person one. Like I'm I'm a. Uh, 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 what the fuck? What what is the what is the animal that adapts to his? If he was sit right Gecko? here, Lizard? not com- is a chameleon. chameleon. A chameleon, chameleon. yeah. Like yeah, I just tripping. adapt to whatever event or whatever vibe I have uh-huh. to go to. So it's like, all right, right, if I'm kicking it with my skating homies, you know, I'm gonna have a skating swag put some going. Dunks on, put you some feel me? Hey, yeah, you feel me? I'm kicking it with my Hooper homies. I'm gonna have an athletic wear on. Yeah. You know, I just know how to you know look the par or whatever event right. I have to be at. You right. know, but. A lot of people they don't know how to read the room, man. No, they yeah. come in, say you gotta go to a formal event, they mm-hmm. coming in just looking crazy and just yeah. like Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And like but, I got I got friends who like their own they only wear Nike. Like mm-hmm. that's it. I'm talking like sweatpants, T shirt every single day. That's it. And that's cool with me, comfy you know what I'm saying? Swag, like comfy swag. Cool that's just man. how you that's just how you rock. That's fine. But those kids also aren't kids like, you know, running their mouths or like saying mm-hmm. different things or you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And they'll be happy for me. So what makes what makes a good fit then? 
a good fit. I was just say put together. What, what, like, so what's like I, I'm pretty sure you have a couple good fits, man. That you that you really was proud of that you put on. And w w in order to make a good fit, what's a fit like? Damn, I'm really fresh as hell. Like I I, yeah. I feel you, like I'm the freshest motherfucker on the earth today. Like before I started doing the clothes, mm -hmm. it was really probably like you know. A really, I really, I really like pants a lot. Like a really cool the pair of jeans. Denim is important. Yeah, denim's huge, huge. But what's the most important thing on a fit? The pants, shirt. It's I, I, everything is important. I honestly say but, the pants. But pants, bro. I say the pants. I love, I love pants. I was just talking to a homie of mine the other day. Like, bro, denim is yeah. so important, bro. Yeah. Like, like you the can have pants. a crazy top t-shirt hoodie on, and then like some shitty denim. Yeah, it's it just kills it. But you could have like some. Crazy ass denim, cool ass denim, and then just wear a white t shirt and you could still look still you fresh. Know, fresh. You know what I'm saying? But like before the clothes, before I was doing the clothes, like a good fit was was like that. You know what I'm saying? But now that I'm doing the clothes, like <clears throat> looking at other people, it's just like put together. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Good pair of jeans with a good shirt, good shoes, they all match, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. But for me myself now, like I feel the best when I'm wearing all my shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I got my own T-shirt on right now. This is this is mine. This is mine. Uh, the jacket is yours. Yeah, this is a. Uh, uh, I just I just it just came in a few days ago. I ordered a sample. It's a it's a mohair sweater. Okay. Got the little you know logo right here. Okay. It's got my tags in it and everything. Okay. But hey. I really like I really, I really been liking fuck like with the, the jacket, uh, man. The jacket and it's like and it's 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 how you pieced it together. Like everything just. It comes together the right, right. way, and yeah. it has your own unique type of style to mm -hmm. it, though for sure. I really like I really like uh, sweaters, and I like different types of like textures too. Like, you, if you ever see just like a normal cardigan, it's got just like that tile look. Mm -hmm. Like, I like the the mohair because it's you know it gives it like depth. Yeah, you know what it mean? just give it that like just flavor, like mm -hmm. the icing on the cake. Like mm -hmm. if you would have just wore, it, if you was just to wear the t shirt and then a hat and the jeans, it's like all right, okay, it's a nice little boom. Right. But the jacket just added that extra, just mm -hmm. all right. It it, it 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 puts the personality into right. the fit. That's what I like. I and appreciate that too. Not for yeah, sure, man. See, not everybody like. going, you know, recognize and realize <laughs> that. Like I said, yeah. not everybody has the just the eye for fashion, mm -hmm. like. But I learned this too. You can't force it on no. people. Like you yeah. don't like some people just. Some people don't give a fuck. Really, yeah, but that's the truth. Honestly, some they just don't really fuck, don't right? care. That's some it. people don't care, but you can't force anybody to care, man. But um, right. so what are some inspirations like? Um, just uh, people that you know inspire you. Just your style inspire the brand. You mm -hmm. know, I'm not saying you biting off them right. in any way possible, but you know, um, you look at them, you're like, all right, you know, you use them as motivation or they inspire you. Mm -hmm. Uh, I one of them's probably my parents. Uh, my my mom used to wear like a lot of vintage stuff like that. I've seen pictures of her wearing stuff like that. I really liked. She used to, I used to like a couple months ago. I had long curly hair, like down to here. She used like we have the same hair. What made you cut it. I Man, I just got sick of it. Like I woke up one day. Shit, I was getting much. sick of it. It was, it was curly, so it was like here, but straightened it was like to here mm -hmm. and it was just doing too much in the shower and shit and all that i was like bro, yeah, it's I woke hot, up. bro it's summer hot. Now, that's it like... too i gotta i gotta get rid of this shit bro i play a lot of basketball hoop mm -hmm. and shit like that so i uh, so you dead. got it it was over with yeah but and then my dad is a uh, uh my dad went to uh berkeley college of music he was a guitar major so he played he played a lot of guitar he was in a band he lived in la for a while when he was younger so and he put me on to like a lot of rock music early mm -hmm. in my life so like Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, Audio Slave, shit like that, mm -hmm. and uh, so like the whole I really like like grunge, like rock, that whole aesthetic. I really like like bikers stuff like that. I really look at like guys on Harley Davidsons with the leather jackets and the all black. Like I really like that a lot. Um, so I'd say like those are my biggest you know inspirations. But then like moving forward, you you know you can find inspiration anywhere, honestly. Like, you seeing stuff on Instagram or you'll see stuff in person, traveling places. Like, even coming down here, like, I was I was coming down here and you see all the factories, all the buildings and stuff. And there's a lot of, you know, graffiti, spray paint, stuff like mm -hmm. that. Like, that shit's cool to me. That's good that yeah. you're observant like that, though, and can yeah. see that. And any creative, anybody who, you know, creates anything... You have to have that just eye of just mm -hmm. looking at your environment and just right. catching inspiration. Like I get inspired off the littlest of things. Yeah. Like I may just sit somewhere at a mall or eat somewhere, and I just people watch and I just mm -hmm. just just watch how people move, watch how they react. People watching is one of the coolest things. In the it world. really is. It's, it really it, is. It, and it's not 
in a weird way, but it's just like you know, yeah, like <laughs> we and, sound creepy. Yeah, as well. not not in a weird way, but right. it's like when you people watch, it's just like it's because you got to just be familiar with your surroundings. Mm-hmm. You just gotta like be in tune with what's going on around you. Right. And like I said, you can catch inspiration from anything. Like yeah. I may see somebody do some cool shit. And I'm like, damn, I'm inspired. I need to go hard at what I'm doing right. so I can, you know, do something like that too. Yeah. You know? I mean, so. inspiration is just, that's why like another thing is like, we were talking about force and stuff and stuff like that. And when you're observant like that, and it really, it really just helps everything kind of like slow down. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you can feel like I got to put something out this week, next week. You know what I'm saying? Bro, but you, when you're, I trust me, I know, you know what I mean? So, but when you're like observing like that and you kind of just sit and, you know, enjoy the moment you're in, and realize like you know what's going on in the world or you know around you it really helps you just become inspired and like i i can't like go sit down at my computer and try and design some stuff like it has to like come to me and then like something will come to me and i'll think about it and then all day i'm thinking damn i can't wait to get home to my computer so i can you know start messing with this that's when you know it's real like you don't want to force that like you said when you had your little like time where you wasn't really feeling your design that you put mm-hmm. out you forced it and mm-hmm. it wasn't it didn't come to no. you naturally so right. you weren't able to and it was shit but it, it's just the world moves so fast mm-hmm. bro like we live in this social media era bro it's like everything is just going fast yeah. as hell fast as hell, fast as hell. so it's kind of hard to just collect yourself as an individual right and just just be like, all right, I need to take a break. I need to chill for mm-hmm. a second and just relax my mind and just yep. and that's because everything's going so fast. Too. My bro. personality is like super fast. Like mm-hmm. my whole life, I've been like, I can't sit still. Mm-hmm. One thing to the next thing to the next thing. You know what I'm saying? And as I get older, it's just me learning how to slow myself down and just like enjoy little things. Like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I've read like you know books and stuff talking about enjoy the moment you're in mm-hmm. and realize like if you're sitting down drinking a cup of coffee think that I'm sitting here enjoying my cup of coffee instead of finish this cup of coffee as fast as, as possible and then get to the next thing. Yeah, you know see, what I mean? I need to learn that, bro, because I'm a I fat, haven't mastered I'm, it. Don't bro, get me wrong. Bro, I'm a fast eater, bro, and people mm-hmm. always look at me like, <laughs> bro, it's not going nowhere. And I just be like, I can't help it. Like, I walk fast. I low-key talk fast. Mm-hmm. I do everything fast. And it's so hard for me to just calm Same. down relax because like i said everything I, I constantly feel like i have to be doing something like when i'm sitting and chilling not doing shit right i'm like what the fuck i gotta got be, got be doing this and i gotta be doing this and that like yeah and that's a good and bad thing but mm-hmm. when you just take time to just relax have that woosah it's moment important. with yourself yeah. yeah you'll be all good but man Definitely. so how do you stay focused bro in a world full of bullshit like man there's so much bullshit going on man to be how honest do you, how do you, you how do you prioritize yourself and focus up and you know do what you got to do to be honest with you my i feel like i'm at a point now where my priorities are pretty straight mm-hmm. you know I, I i work you know uh i hang out with my girlfriend you know we have a good relationship everything's good in that front i'm good with my family everything's good there I'm good with all my friends, you know, good on that front. So then it, when everything around you is, is moving well, it just allows me to, you know, when I have time to be by myself and create and do things, it just allows my mind to be, you know, strictly focused on what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. You know, when you got shit that's fucked up around you in the world, it's like you'll be trying to do something, whether you're at work or here or there, and you're just, you know, tripping, going through a million different things. You can't focus on what you're doing. Mm-hmm. But I feel like when, when you get your priorities straight and everything around you is, is going well, it really just starts to calm you as a person, and then you can focus on, you know, whatever task you want to complete. That sounds like a lot of balance. Like, you got to have balance, bro, because, yeah. you know, it sounds like a you don't want anything to lack. Right. You know, you got, you know, you want to build your brand up. You know, obviously mm-hmm. you got to make it to work. You mm-hmm. want to spend time kicking with your girlfriend, but then you don't want to leave your friends behind. Mm-hmm. You got to spend time with them. Yeah. Then you got to have time for your family. Then you got to have time to hoop. Right. And it's just like, you know, how right. how how do you find the balance? Because that's the struggle I'm having right now. I need to find a balance, yeah. a true balance in my life to handle and get all the things that I need to do yeah. done. But it's just like, I don't want anything to lack. Right. But it's like, realistically... It's going to be some things that are going to lack. Like, you kind of got to prioritize what's the most important mm-hmm. and, like, okay, what's the least important right. and, you know, figure it out. So. Right. I mean, it's, it's don't get, like, I don't, I'm not completely balanced. I don't have this shit figured out by any means. But, but it's a day-to-day process. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's like you're doing stuff day-to-day, literally. I mean, you got to, for me at least, I try and, you know, like, 
in a week set aside time that I need to do these specific things. Like I'll write down in my notes on my phone, like this week for my brand, I have to get these things done. You know what I'm saying? And, and everything from there, because I got, I mean, I got a really cool girlfriend. I got really cool friends. My parents are really cool. Everything kind of just has been sinking lately. And, you know, that's a great feeling. Best advice to anybody watching this. Utilize that note app. Oh, man. But that's the best app, bro. I my lifeline is. is on my damn notes app, bro. I swear. Like, Mm-hmm. I used to write everything down, but it's just pulling out a pen and paper, and then yeah. I still like to write stuff down here and there. Right. But now it's just straight notes app. Like Same. I just everything is on the notes. You have a you ever get a dry erase board like a big ass? Gym? Of course. I got one in my house yeah. that that like for the big things, mm-hmm. like monthly. I can write I write that down yeah. and stuff like that. But like like you're saying day to day stuff, little stuff, notes is. Best thing ever. So you write down goals that you want to achieve, yeah. and you know how do you make sure that you hit those goals? Though how do you make sure that you really stay on top of it to, to to make those goals? Well, for me, I mean, there's like short term, long term goals, but doing things monthly for me, like breaking it down by month, really helps me. Like, it's like a puzzle. Mm-hmm. Like put together the pieces to be done, but I need I I know exactly where these pieces need to be to finish it, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So doing the, you know, like the dry erase board with everything I need to have monthly. And then if I get these things done, I can understand that I've reached that goal of having everything in, in this timeline done. And then it's on to the next timeline for bigger, better things, yeah. you know? I don't really like to like plan too long term though, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Cause like people ask you like, where do you see yourself 10 years? Yeah. I don't, I don't have no idea, bro. I, I could I couldn't even tell you. you that. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, that's how, I have no idea. You know what I'm saying? Why, so that that's good. That is good, though, because life, I learned life is going to take its course regardless. Mm-hmm. But it is kind of good to have an idea, right. you know, of kind of where you want to go. But it's just like you never know, bro, because right. you may think you're going to be somewhere or doing something. You could be doing totally something different. Yeah. Where I'd like so. to be is probably totally different than, you know, mm-hmm. where I could be. But or it could, you know, it could happen. I learned you know? this, too, bro. Where we, where you like, where we, where you would like to be is not always where you're meant to be. Mm-hmm. So you may have this idea of what, like, you know, you got your brand, right? You know, I'm pretty sure you want to flourish in your brand, you mm-hmm. know, continue to grow it. Da, da, da. But this brand might just be a stepping stone for, like, what you're truly destined right. to, like, do in life. And right. you don't even have a clue, but it just fell in your lap. Like, damn, like, it just clicked in your brain. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, wow, this is what I'm really meant to do. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to do that. But you wouldn't have got to that point if you didn't start work the risk, right. if you didn't start your brand, if you didn't just jump off the porch and, you know, do <laughs> right. what you need to do. I actually kind of have a good example of that. I do one long-term goal of mine is to have a, my own show on Beats One Radio. Okay. Not like a, a not like this, not like a, a talking show, but like where I get to play like a, my own songs for like an hour in time, like shit that I'm listening to. Because I really mm-hmm. like music. I listen to a lot of music, like. That's one of the biggest things I do. Bro, I'm music, music is constantly. therapy, bro. Oh, music yeah, is motivation. Music is everything, bro. Like, yeah. I don't remember a day I've went without listening to music, bro. Never. I've never. Honestly, like, I, can, I, I can't tell you. Ever. Music is like, bro, and we don't really realize it, that music plays such an important role in our lives, bro. Mm-hmm. It gets us through shit. Mm-hmm. It just motivates us. It puts us in a different state of mind. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like when you listen to music, bro, like, it's just like a... I don't know. You're in tune with what's going on, but you're like away from the world at the moment. Right. Like, right. whatever type of music that interests you, whatever you like, when you listen to music, it's like that dose of a just mm-hmm. a adrenaline rush and just. Yeah. And some days you're in different moods, and you know, like some days I want to listen to all rock today. Like yeah. I just want to listen to rock music, and then so one day I might be like raining out and to chill. I want to listen to alternative yeah. or like I'm going to do something. I want to listen to rap, you know, mm-hmm. shit like that. Yeah. And I like, you know how like people like bitch about like how rap is now and people are just talking about the money, the cars, the jewelry mm-hmm. and shit like that. Like to be honest with you, I don't have, I like listening to that shit because it's like these dudes got themselves to a place where they can now buy all these cars, all this jewelry, all these houses. It's their reality Why? now. Exactly. Like, Why would you not talk about that? And shit? I think people, people, people don't want people to grow. Right. People, but also people <clears throat> want something that they can relate to. Mm-hmm. But it's like, okay, yeah. So, this is a good point too. I love listening to like rappers 
when they first start, you know, coming out and mm-hmm. they hungry. Like, yeah. you can hear the hunger in their music. Uh-huh. You can hear, like, man, I listen to old Drake shit. Old Drake does not sound like the Drake now. No, old J. Cole don't even sound like the J. Cole now. No. And I can name a bunch of artists. Right. When you listen to their mixtape projects, it's a whole different vibe. That's why, then. like, mixtape Wayne was like, yeah, like the I'm saying, though, you feel me? Mixtape Wayne was fire, but it's just like, when in life you go through certain things and you 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 level up you level up so it's like this person is a multi millionaire why would they be still doing struggle raps yeah. they're not talking yeah. about eating ramen noodles no, in yeah. the in the projects and like because that's not their reality There's now with popping your shit like they're living in the mansion they popping bottles and uh-huh. they boom but yeah. reason why I like you know the raw raw music like I like all type of music mm-hmm. but it's a time and place for anything like right. when I want to go out. Of course, I want to listen to the turn up shit right. and all that because it puts me in that mind frame of yeah. I'm about to turn up. Right? <laughs> and when I'm like at the gym, yeah, I'm gonna put on a J Cole because uh-huh. it's motivational and, and whatnot. Right. But yeah, I don't know, man. And it's just like if you think about this shit, back in the day, they was talking about the same shit, just so a whole it was just different lingo. It was a whole different flow. Yeah, a whole yeah. different lingo. So you mm-hmm. really can't hate on no, just. Yeah. And it's like if you don't want to listen to it, don't listen to it. Like right. everybody ain't gonna like. What you like, no, and yeah. that's that's and that's, that's the same cool. with everything too. Not even just music, bro. Right, that's clothes, what clothes, anything, YouTube, bro. Doing everything like that. Yeah, hey, I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> people just gotta like, people gotta stay in their lane, bro. People mm-hmm. gotta just do what's best for them and right. realize that you feel me. Not everybody going like, not everybody gonna like this podcast. Yeah, not everybody gonna like your clothes. Right, and that's cool. That's fine. Yeah, but people don't realize. People like take everything to heart. Yeah. And you shouldn't do that. Like right. you shouldn't take everything to heart because you're be or miserable. people think that you're like talking about them or like mm-hmm. something like that. It's like, bro, so they probably think we talking. Somebody has an H and M fit on right now. I was just thinking that, bro. I was thinking they're myself, like, like, damn, did I say yeah, the wrong thing? <laughs> they, somebody has an H and M fit on from head to bottom. They mm-hmm. even got the shoes from there too. And yeah. you know they hate and us. And H and M was on all that racist shit with the t shirts. That is true. Oh, yeah, yeah fuck so H&M. fuck them. Yeah. No, I don't feel bad no more. Fuck it. Yeah, exactly. Fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. So, uh, I don't know if I asked you this, but you kind of broke it down. So, besides, you know, you know, um, clothes or whatnot, what's some stuff you like to do in your free time, man? It just mm-hmm. uh, take your mind off shit. I like to listen to music a lot. I listen to a lot of music. Uh, I like to hoop. I play with my friends all the time. I actually I coach. At a, a high school in Toledo. Oh, that's dope. Uh, yeah, Southview High School. I'm the JV head coach, so oh, that's you know dope. that's in the winter and like, it's like November through March. It's like every day, you know, I'm I'm coaching. So how has that been? Like, coaching? I love it. I love it. I mean, I'm I played basketball my whole life. I've traveled for mm-hmm. basketball. I've been, you know, Atlanta, Dallas, Vegas, shit like that. So I've been around it for so long mm-hmm. that it's it feels really cool to not like have to be worried about playing anymore and listening to a coach. And then it feels cool to be the coach that, like, isn't a douche. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the kids like me. The kids can relate to me because I'm younger. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. So I like coaching a lot. It's, yeah, that, that's it's good. Gratifying. Like, that's always good to have younger coaches because that, <clears throat> there's somebody that they can relate to. They can mm-hmm. look at you as a brother. Like, okay, you know, yeah. he's not this old dude who's just right. yelling at us, screaming at us and shit. Yeah. Like, basketball is actually... so evolved, bro, that, like, these bro. old men coaching, like, those ways are gone. You know, no, what I'm that's a lot of young coaches now. Right, right. Like, look at Memphis's head coach. He's like 36 years old, yeah. youngest coach in the NBA. And shit. Speaking about basketball evolving, shit. The players have evolved. Exactly. Like, these motherfuckers out here are just crazy, like, crazy. Jason I'm talking about six nine, six bro. Fuck that, Luca. Man, yeah, Luca's is a crazy. fucking dog. Like, I don't. Mm-hmm. By the time this video comes out, <laughs> who knows what the fuck? Wait, so. I said, uh, by the time this video comes out, they should probably be in a championship by now. I want to say, I want to say it starts like yeah, cause really early ju- July or really yeah. late June. So yeah. What's your predictions? Who, who you who you got winning this I shit, think, bro? I think the Nets are gonna be hard to beat, but something tells me that Brian might do it. Bro, you know it's so crazy. I want Bron to win <laughs> so bad. I want him to win so bad just to like, cause I really want him to beat this Nets team mm-hmm. just to like, all right now, now what are y'all gonna say about this man? Yeah, like, what are, what are you gonna say about him now? I know they're gonna still find a reason to hate, yeah. but but I don't know, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm not really confident in this this year's Lakers team, really? bro. It's just like. I think if uh, if really. Bron if Bron can do what he did against the Warriors in 2018, true with. 
fucking George Hill and all yeah. those bum ass D- J.R. Smith and yeah. shit like that. Like he's got Anthony Davis, but Anthony Davis has got to play well. Bro, he's the key factor. Yeah, like, he is. When he, he plays he, like he, soft he, and shoots all the jumpers yeah, and shit, and they lose. Fucking on the ground all the uh-huh. time, bro. He stays on the fucking ground. Like get your ass the fuck yeah, up, bro. Literally. But but yeah, Anthony Davis is the key factor. But what I don't like about him is like, bro. Every day you have the opportunity, the opportunity of being the best player on the floor, mm-hmm. but you don't really take advantage. No, of yeah, that. I feel like, like he takes like nights off. Yeah, because he, he could be the best two way player like damn near yeah. ever if he yeah. really like wanted to yeah, and had he's that so mentality. Too. He, bro, he's what is he like? How tall is he? Like six eleven, six eleven can shoot, dribble, all yeah. that, and then he crazy on the defense. But mm-hmm. for some reason, like you said, he does take nights off, bro, and I don't, I don't understand it. It's so but frustrating. That Nets watch team, too. bro. And that's, well, they that's they a pure got, AU squad. They kind of got exposed last night, though. Yeah. Because I Tatum mean, were, was getting off. Oh my god. They wouldn't, and they're they're switching Kyrie on him every time, mm-hmm. and he's just giving Kyrie hell. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you if you can get somebody to just go at Kyrie, switch ball screens, go straight at him. Yeah. I mean, you got a shot. Facts. Yeah. Then the Knicks are good this year. I'm like, damn, when the fuck did the Knicks get <laughs> sweet? Like, but I don't know. I got Trey Young beating uh-huh. them for sure, yeah, dude. I think, I think so. That's too. Steph Curry 2.0 right there. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, crazy. And then Luca, bro, like, can't, like, can't do shit with him, bro. Mm-hmm. He just, uh, it's crazy. He, he, it is what, third year, second year in the league? Third year. And he's already top five to me. Yeah. To me, top five. Yeah, he only 22. Arguably, yeah. 22. He's the future of the league because yeah. it's just like, bro, he's 6'7, can shoot. He's crazy. He just, Work, he play at his own pace. Yeah, he he, just, the games move slow to him. It moves slow to him. He's yeah. just like, bro, y'all can't fuck with me. Like, right. y'all just, just like literally. And it's, he's a point guard, so it's mm-hmm. like you got six seven point guard. You're going up against an average six two six three point guard. It's nothing you can do that. He uses his body. Shrimp fry rice. Yep. I'm backing you down in Every the paint. It's, it's over. Every time. All right, man. To wrap this up, man. Um, I always like to ask people this, man. Um, just to give people some inspiration out there. So. It may be somebody out there watching this video right now, man. They lost in the sauce. They don't know what to do. They trying to figure it out. They don't have no hope. Mm-hmm. Um, what's some advice that you can give somebody who kind of trying to figure it out and they need some inspiration, and motivation? Man, like I have. Sometimes I have, you know, kids DM me and you know they'll like ask for, you know, help or you know some sort of guidance. And the, I mean, the honest answer is you just gotta be yourself. I know it's like cliche and you hear that all the time, but. It really does work. Like, if you just do your own thing, you get it up all by yourself, you know, it, it's going to work out. If you push what you want to push and do what you want to do, I mean, people like individuality, and they like when they see people doing their own thing. So for me, if you're doing your own thing and you really don't care what anybody else has to say and you just do it regardless, I, I think you'll be successful to me. Um, not that I'm, like, some level of success but oh, man hey people can look at you and say that though bro because right. like we said bro it's a lot of people that aren't doing things bro right. so they can look at you and be like man you just did in but you mm-hmm. know you feel that way because you know the level that you're trying to take it right but don't don't man don't don't right. don't, don't 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 belittle yourself <laughs> man. you're doing your thing man keep doing your it. thing definitely i do i do want to show you something though okay uh i got these these will probably be out by the time this video this video drops but I wanted to show you these, see what you thought, just because I like getting people's, you know, opinions on things. So I got these. Mm. Them is hard. You should have worn that with the fit. You know what's crazy? I was about to, but I haven't gotten product pictures yet. Okay, hold them up for the uh, for the camera. Definitely give them a little uh, 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 uh. Now them <laughs> is fire. I appreciate it. So that's just that's a sample, or you know this that's is, just, yeah. This okay. is the sample. So. It actually turned out like exactly what I wanted. Okay. I was I was very very happy. I went through. It took took about like five months total probably. Wow. I went I went through three different manufacturers. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, the first two didn't end up working out. They were pushing deadlines. They were you know sending me pictures of shit that I just didn't like and I said you know what give me my money back I'm gonna find somebody else so I had to do that twice <laughs> found somebody they actually came out how I wanted them to and they you know the, the, nah, this is fire. a lot of the time with like with shoes they'll be like the leather's really like crumbly I like the and stuff quality, like that bro, the quality. that's what I was that's most what happy it's with. about bro it's the quality yeah that's the what I was happiest was with was this, you know the stitch and quality of it and everything I was see people pleased. don't see that they don't they just think that you're putting something out and it was so right. easy to do but like right. you said bro five months yeah of 
going through bullshit in order to get the you know product mm-hmm. out. So mm-hmm. like, these are hard, bro. Yeah, yeah, you should have wore that you, with the fit. I was about man. man I hey, wish you would have came crazy. I would have. I would have. But I need to keep the soles clean because nah. I got to do the product pictures and I didn't want to. Nah, I didn't want to ruin them. But nah, yeah, feet. that's dope, bro. I can't. I can't wait to drop them. I'm gonna, so when I'm gonna you, start rolling when them. When are you trying to drop them? Uh, I'm thinking like middle of June. Okay. Uh, I got I got a so I bought a, another thing a shoebox a different shoebox. This is just the one they they sent me. Mm-hmm. I got a different shoebox coming with it, but they shipped it FedEx. FedEx broke the box, had wow. to ship it back. So they're shipping me another box. So now it pushed that back like ten days, and I want to do the product pictures with the new box. So I was planning on having the box done, having the shoes done, having the product pictures, wearing it here with you. But then I just figured, you know what, fuck it, I'll just bring them with me. Man, they don't, they don't know the half, bro. Man. They don't know the man, half. They don't see the half. Keep grinding, though, man. Now, these is pressure, you, bro. Man. Like Thank I said, you, when them black hats drop, definitely let me know. I well, well I'll, I'll follow you, so I'll yeah, be yeah. able to figure it out. But, I got you. Um, besides that, what are some, 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 some other things that you got coming out, man, that you want to? So I got these coming out. These are coming with some sweat shorts, some okay. socks, and a T-shirt. The whole um, package deal. So I'm going to do, like, you know, a whole little fit. Uh I'm going to do all pre-order, I think, just because um, I'm not, to be completely honest with you, I don't know what to expect with these. I've yeah. never dropped a shoe. I don't know how many I'm going to sell. That's smart, though, you to know do a pre-order. So I don't want to sit on, like, 50 pairs of shorts, 50 socks, 50, t- you know what I'm saying, yeah. and sell 10 of them. No, that's you know what facts. I mean? So I just want to do a pre-order, but I want there to be, like, if, say, somebody likes the shoes, but they really don't have the money to buy the shoes, but they, you know, they like the shorts or they like the T-shirt, they can do that, too. Um, and then I was thinking about dropping this this summer actually because it's like a spring summer type thing, but because it's really light. I'm definitely buying that. Like that, you, I ain't gonna lie to you. That's that's getting bought. Thank you, bro. Yeah, but <laughs> that's I, getting bought. And just what the you fact think, summer that summer or no? Uh, Shall I wait till the fall? I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. See, I be buying fall stuff in, in the, the summer. summer. <laughs> I buy winter stuff in the summer, uh-huh. but I would say fall. Though, yeah, for real, I think I'm gonna wait till fall. Yeah, I, I got, say yeah. fall. I, but but not too. I say no, soon yeah. as September hit drop. Definitely. Like definitely. soon as September yeah, I was thinking hit like drop. Like end of August, September. Nah, that's swag. I will definitely be buying. I ain't gonna. Mm. You might just have to give me the exclusive, <laughs> man. I just you know what I'm saying. I got but, you. But nah, yeah, you. that's definitely pressure. Uh, so where can the people follow you at on social media? Where's the what's the brand page? Uh, you know, my brand wanna... page is underscore worth the risk. Uh, my personal page is uh, Nate Sko N A T E S K O. Um, the website is on is on both of my pages too. So whenever, whenever you go to those pages, check out the website. I still got a few things in stock on there. Um, yeah, come check it out. Hey, man, make sure y'all go shop with him and definitely check him out. Definitely got some dope stuff, you know, on there and dope stuff coming out soon, man. But appreciate you, man, for stopping man, by, man, chop it up with me. Bro. It's a dope conversation, man. Yeah, man. I'm glad to fun. meet you, too, man. We just met today, yeah, man. Yeah. For me, it don't even seem like it, man. It seemed like <laughs> I knew you for a little minute. But t- definitely keep doing your thing, man. Thank keep you, striving. Keep you progressing. Too. Stay focused. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just... Stay away from the hate, man. Stay yeah, away man. from the haters, Got man. To. Keep, Got to. Keep everything polished. Keep it going. Keep yep. the ball rolling. And like I said, I appreciate you for stopping by here, man. man thank you, bro. Make sure y'all go follow him, man. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, man. You know, um, tell a friend to tell a friend. You know, help me get my subscribers up. Help me, you know what I'm saying, uh, get these videos out to people, man. But until next time, see you later.